Welcome back to the Time Capsule video series. You know, I did all these in 2010, but there's always been a couple of these videos that I didn't get a chance to create that I've been thinking about for the last two years. So here on January 1st, 2013, I thought I would take some time to do one of these videos, and these are going to be problems we haven't solved. So here we are in the 2010 or 2012 or 2013 time frame. And there are a lot of things that, you know, are unsolvable or seem to be unsolvable problems for human beings. And I thought it'd be fun to list these because 200 years from now, surely almost all of these problems will have been solved. And you can look back and see some of the things we were thinking about or struggling with or wondering about back in the 2010 or 2012 time frame. So let's start by looking at the state of computer technology. And this slide shows you the basic position we're in right now at the beginning of 2013. First of all, we have no natural language processing. You can't really talk to a computer and have it understand what you're saying naturally. And certainly no conversations are taking place with computers. There's no computer vision. So you, know, you might be able to do something simple like recognize pancakes on a conveyor belt or something like that, but there's no way for a computer to recognize a scene or understand what's in it in any general sense. There's no tactile sensing like you know a, a computer feels a coin and recognizes it as a coin. There are no robots of any significance in the real world like walking around on the streets or in houses or anything. But this funny thing called passwords funny thing called CAPTCHA, which shows you how bad the computer vision situation is right now. And we're also bumping into these limits of silicon right now, where you know we might be able to go for five more years and progress, but it's not clear what we're going to use once we make transistors on silicon small enough that they can't go any smaller, which really probably will happen in the next five years. One thing that's really changed since 2010 is the rise of tablet computers. On this side, this is the most popular tablet today, probably. It's the Apple iPad, and on this side is a slightly smaller tablet called the Nexus 7, which comes from uh, Google. And there's been maybe a hundred million of these sold, possibly more in the last two years, and they've really kind of taken over as the thing people use to browse on the internet and send email and simple things like that. So I just wanted to show you kind of what the state of computer technology is today. Let's just go to Google. This is a common search engine in the year 2012 and uh, it has voice recognition so we can give that a try. And we can ask it a simple question like um, how tall is the Empire State Building? And, you know, it listened to the first part of what I said. You can see, so I'm going to ask it again. How tall is the Empire State Building? Empire State Building is 1,454 feet tall. So, you know, that looks kind of impressive. It found out how tall it is and it told it to me. But, you know, if you change that question, like... How many stories is the Empire State Building? Empire State Building is 1,454 feet tall. Yeah, that doesn't really tell me how many stories it is, and, and there's not really you know, anything to do about it. And this kind of shows you that this is an illusion. So if you ask it a really common question in a really normal way, it can give you an answer like this. But let's say we want to ask it a, you know, a, a question like, um, uh, for example, who is my senator? So here you see just how bad computers are in 2012. There's no way that a, a computer can really answer this kind of general question because first it doesn't know who I am and even if it did know who I am it wouldn't be smart enough to say, well, to figure out Marshall Senator, I really need to go back and figure out what state he lives in. And then from that, I can figure out who the senators for that state are, and I can tell him. So, you know, I would have to know enough to maybe ask like this, 
Who are North Carolina's senators? North Carolina's senators are K.R. Hagan and Richard Burr. So there, you know, if you tune the question, you can get an answer like that. But anything really kind of involved or or more than one level deep is basically impossible for a computer to answer right now. It is getting better slowly, but uh, it's going to be a while before a computer can just kind of have a, a natural language processing ability, even of that of a fifth grader. And, you know, it's going to be an even longer period of time before we can have a conversation with a computer and ask it, you know, detailed questions and have it know the context of things, you know, it it just is way far away from that at this moment in history. So let me show you another thing that kind of demonstrates the limits of uh, computer technology right now. Let's say that I wanted to go back to Google. Uh, touch screen this isn't really working here so let's try it this way there we go we go back to Google and we oops um, yeah let's try that again take me to reddit.com opening web page uh, so I want reddit and it interpreted that as read it and that's not really what I wanted so let's try it again take me to reddit.com yeah that didn't really work either um, so I'm just gonna type it in r e d d i t dot com now this is a a really common social media site that is very popular in the United States and much of the world right now. So uh, what I want to show you is is how you would have an account on Reddit because it's kind of amusing. Uh, let's say I want to create a new account. I'm going to use screenshots here so it's easier for you to see it. I would go up here and I would click on this little word that says register and that would pop up this window here. The first thing I'd enter is my username and I would just create a random name for myself. People usually use anonymous funny names on Reddit. Then I would type in a password. This is how I come back and authenticate who I am. It's a word that I have in my memory, you know, like Scooby Dooby Doo or whatever the magic word is that's my password. And then there's this little thing at the bottom and this is called a captcha. And the idea here is that computers are so bad at understanding images that we use image processing to certify human beings in 2012 or 2013. And so you can see these are kind of skewed letters on a grid background. A computer can't read this or understand this. So uh, I, as a human being, can, and I would just type in these letters to confirm that I'm an actual living, breathing human being, which... It, you know, I imagine even in 10 years, we will have figured this out. But right now, in 2013, it's impossible. So let's talk about space stuff. As I mentioned in an earlier video, there's no easy way to get into space right now. We use great big chemical rockets. It costs a fortune to launch anything into orbit. There's no space elevators. There's no moon colonies. Although we did put humans on the moon about 40 years ago, there's been no humans anywhere outside of near-Earth orbit since then. So there's no people anywhere near a planet like Mars. We don't mine asteroids. We don't have space power systems. There's no Earth defense system to protect us from something that might come from somewhere else in the galaxy. We really, really are pretty limited. But we have accomplished three things in 2012. One is we put this pretty impressive to us rover on Mars called the Curiosity rover. It's the one on the right in this picture. SpaceX, the private space company, was able to get a capsule up to the International Space Station, and we do have the International Space Station, which is still active and orbiting planet Earth as we speak. So that's kind of the state of the art in space technology right now.
What about the weather? In 2012 or 2013, we really have no way to control the weather. So it's hot or cold, it rains, it snows, we have tornadoes or hurricanes, we have no control over any of that. We're pretty poor at predicting the weather more than two or three days out. And weather causes a lot of damage right now. So in 2012, there was a huge hurricane that hit New Jersey and New York. It caused billions of dollars worth of damage. We didn't have a single thing we could do about it. We just watched it happen. Turning to the world of medicine, in 2012, everyone dies. It's been like that forever, but I expect it gets better in the future. But right now, the average person lives to be about 78 years old in the United States. The oldest human on Earth right now is 115 years old, and that's as old as any human being has ever been, I believe. And we die of all sorts of things. Leading the list is heart disease. 650,000 people died this past year of heart disease. Then there's cancer. Tobacco-related is the fact that about a third of Americans' adults smoke and they get diseases and they die. Obesity is a huge and growing problem. Then there's medical errors. These are errors doctors make when treating a patient and it actually kills the patient. 200,000 people die of those kind of mistakes from human doctors. Then there's stroke, which is a clot in the brain, respiratory diseases, accidents like car accidents or people tripping down the steps, things like that, and dying. Hospital infection kind of goes with number five. People go into the hospital, they get infected there, and they die. And then there's alcohol because so many adults in America drink and there's a lot of diseases associated with drinking. Here's a quick review of the medical gaps we have right now. There's no treatment for paralysis. We don't have any way to put back a limb that's been amputated. There's no artificial organs to speak of. We do have transplants that come from accident victims, but it's kind of a not a very refined art. There's no drug targeting. So if you take a drug, basically it goes throughout your whole body and may cause a lot of side effects. We have a problem with antibiotic resistance that's occurring right now where antibiotics stop working and we have to develop new ones. We don't have a cure for something as simple as the common cold, much less most other diseases. And there's this funny thing with abortions, about a million or more per year, because we don't really have a good handle on uh, a way to control uh, fertility. So we do have contraceptive drugs, but not everybody takes them and they fail sometimes and lots of other things. What about existential threats we face? The number one one would have to be nuclear bombs. There's more than 10,000 of them on the planet right now, and they could wipe out the planet many times over. Or we could get hit by an asteroid. We have no real way to defend against that right now. A giant volcano could erupt, causing a volcanic winter. Or if that doesn't happen, global warming could cause a lot of problems. We just don't know. Uh, we don't really have any way to fully predict that. There's a drought going on right now. A more serious drought could cause a food calamity, meaning we might not grow enough food to feed all the people who need it, and a lot of people would end up starving. And then there could be some kind of global epidemic that could just pop up out of nowhere and, and affect a lot of people. All of these things could cause serious problems to human beings, and we don't have a way really to defend against any of these right now. And finally, I thought it would be funny to put this slide in. These are things that science fiction tells us we will one day have, but we are nowhere near having. These seem impossible right now. So humanoid robots that do all the work, ray guns or blasters, shields that protect us from ray guns and blasters, any kind of anti-gravity or artificial gravity, a food machine, like all our food right now comes from plants we grow in the ground or animals that we butcher the transporter room from Star Trek. Yeah, that's not going to probably ever happen. But instant healing, flying cars, the idea of easy personal space travel where you just hop in your spaceship and you are off to the moon if you want to go there. Vac trains. These are trains running in vacuum tubes at thousands of miles per hour. The end of poverty, the end of pollution, the end of wars, any kind of alien contact that hasn't happened and there's no reason to expect that it will good batteries that last you know more than a day that would be great but they don't exist and then universal language i probably should add to this fusion power or some kind of general power system things like that so 
I hope you've enjoyed this quick presentation on things we can't do in 2012. I expect over the next 200 years you'll accomplish most or all of these things and you can look back and kind of think about how primitive we were in 2012. Have a good new year.